Good evening and welcome to this tutorial session on the Thousand Genomes Project data. It's fantastic to see everyone here. I, I think we've sold out, basically. Uh, and it gives you a sense of how much excitement there is in the human genetics community about this project, which you've all heard a bit about. There have been a whole bunch of talks today, and there will continue to be talks throughout the whole conference. And so you, you get a sense that uh, it is one of the big things happening in, in human genetics, human genomics, at the moment. And the idea of this tutorial session is to try and give you a much closer sense of what the project data looks like, how you can get at it, how you can learn about particular regions that you, as researchers, might be interested in, how you can actually use these data in your own studies, hopefully to find out new interesting things about diseases or, or whatever process you're interested in. So it's worth sort of, you know, just trying to reiterate this, this sense of excitement. It's 10 years since the, the, the first draft genome was generated, and we're now at the stage, you know, the, the publication that, that, that is in Nature last week is, is of the pilot study. That's 180 or so genomes. But as a project, we're already up to essentially the 1,000 genome mark in terms of d data generation. Um, and over the next few months, you'll see that coming through. So these, these data are really coming through. And what we hope this project will, will do, and I think we're, we're already seeing that it is doing, is essentially being a, a, a transform, transformative uh, project. It's, it's going to change the way people can do human genetics and human genomics. So just a couple of things about what the project is. Um, it is a big thing. You, you see there are lots of us here, and, there are, and in fact, the whole conference is kind of peppered with people involved in the project. There's probably one of them sitting next to you now. Uh, it's, so it's a big international project, and the idea is it is trying to make the baseline reference set study of human genomic variation that will provide the foundation for human genetics in the next few years, maybe five, maybe 10 years, that kind of scale. So it's a consortium with many platforms. That's many of, the di many of these uh, massively parallel sequencing technologies, the high throughput si systems, lots of different centers, lots of different people, lots of different research groups, both on the, so the everything through, from the informatics through to the disease association uh, groups. And of course, lots and lots of uh, funders all cheerfully putting money in to support this fantastic operation. And so it's going to, we, what we hope is that it will provide a resource to support genome-wide association studies, the GWAS of, in, the, in the abbreviation, uh, in many different populations, not just one, but hopefully across uh, the world pretty much. We set ourselves some quite specific quantitative goals. We, we decided to, to try and be hard about this, so uh, we set out to find at least 95% of all the SNPs in the, human, in the accessible human genome, I think probably more on that later, at a frequency of, that, that are there at a, a frequency of 1% in, in the population, as defined somehow. And then in, genome, in, in genic regions to try and push further down into the rare variants, going down towards the 0.1%. Importantly, it's an, a project that doesn't just aim to find the SNPs, but also to find all types of genetic variation. We believe they're all important, potentially important in, in disease, and so we want to find both the shorter insertion and deletion polymorphisms, and the larger, more complicated structural variants that can have quite dramatic effects on, on genes. So at one level, it's a catalog of variation, but it's also, uh, it is trying to generate a thousand, or in probably ultimately about two and a half thousand individual genomes. So we want to provide genotypes, the set of variants carried by these 2,000 people, and we want to put those on particular haplotype backgrounds. We want to say this variant goes with that variant in this particular place. And, and as Jeff will describe later, that, that's going to be a very important technique, a sort of resource in, for one use of these data. Providing the data is uh, one thing, but very importantly to us, we decided that we wanted to make uh, the data from individuals for which we had cell lines available. So that means that other people can go and take the same samples and either do genetic studies or to look at molecular phenotypes, gene expression, chromatin changes, and so on. And, 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 um, and in doing so, this, this, uh, this notion of a central reference data set that lots of different groups can kind of converge towards, I think, will be very powerful. And then finally, uh, 
we, we decided that we'd be a totally open project, that is basically everyone else sees the data at the same time that we do, um, and obviously we processing it and, and providing summaries of it that were much more digestible, but, and our goal is to do that uh, publicly and quickly with these uh, frequent releases. Just to give you a, few, a, a little heads up of the way in which I think people will use the data in medical genetics, first up, they're going to use uh, the data uh, through a technique called imputation to essentially do genotyping for free in existing genome-wide association studies. So I think that's one thing that people are already doing, and, it, and it's actually providing resolution and, in some cases, new uh, regions of association in, in disease genetics. But there are other uses as well. You might simply be interested in finding out all the sort of polymorphic variants in this particular region of a genome. And the, the, the project's good for that. It will give you a catalog of the variants we found and some notion of their allele frequencies. So you might choose some to prioritize for, for later work. And then a, a third and very useful uh, technique is to take the, the, the variants that we found and essentially use that as a screen for variants in subjects uh, that you might be interested in. Perhaps you study a particular a Mendelian disease or, or a particular you know, cluster of individuals with a, a super phenotype of a particular disease, and you want to find the things that are really novel or unique to this set of individuals, and the, and the thousand genomes gives you a sort of an uh, overview of normal variation against which to, to make that screen. Just one very quick word of, about imputation. It's this technique that um, I mentioned there, the idea that you can essentially do genotyping for free. The idea is that you take uh, the thousand genomes data some data that you've already collected, say, from genome-wide association studies, and then you use statistical techniques that Jeff will talk about to essentially do the filling in process. Uh, it can be very powerful, and certainly when we get to the so thousand genome samples, it will be, it massively uh, reduce the cost uh, of, ge of genome-wide surveys because you won't have to do the sequencing yourself necessarily. So that's kind of the future. That the, the, Where we are exactly at the moment is essentially uh, very, we have uh, very mature releases of data on three pilot projects, uh, one looking at some trios, one looking at low coverage samples, and one's focusing on some exons. Uh, you know, there are 180 of these low coverage genomes, but there are about 700 of these exons at different coverage, coverages, and we've learned different things from each of those. Going forward, about 2,500 samples in the full project for, spread across the, the world, but not randomly from across the world. The idea is to collect them in, in regions of major medical genetics interest in sort of in little satellite groups of populations. So f essentially the idea is to get five lots of 100 samples uh, from particular geographic regions such as Europe or East Asia and so on. Uh, so as I said, I think uh, we have data on uh, over 1,000 samples available to us as a project at the moment. Um, that's not in a digested form for you yet, but Gonzalo this morning announced that, that we have a release currently on 600 samples as of about today. Uh, and that slide gives you a sense of where we, we expect to be. So another 600 samples being sequenced by the end of, um, or by mid next year, and then a further 800 towards the end of the, that year and the beginning of the next. And in addition to the sequence data across the whole genome, we're going to collect XM sequence for those as well. And importantly, other types of, of information about genetics, SNP genotyping on dense 2.5, 5 million, 10 million SNP arrays, additional array CGH to get better resolution and genotyping for uh, copy number variants and structural variants. So the idea is to try and integrate all these different sorts of information to provide this very high quality set of two, four thousand, sorry, two to two and a half thousand genomes. Okay, that's enough from me. Let's hear from the people uh, who, uh, who are going to give you much more detailed insight into some of these. First up, we're going to have Gabor talking in a lot more detail about what the thousand genomes data look like. Stephen is then going to tell you about how you get your hands on the, on the data, kind of important. Paul's going to tell you actually uh, about a, a browser that we have and that, we, that has been, he and his team have been developing, which is, allows you to look at a lot of the data in, in the context of genome annotations, pull out bits of it, um, and so really explore the data without having to 
get all the data down onto your computer. Uh, Jan's then going to tell you about structural variants as a particular class of variant that a lot of people are interested in. And then Jeff is going to finish up by telling you about how the data can actually be used in medical genetics. And, it, and if there are people standing at the end, there'll be some questions and answers. On that note, however, there will be some time for questions at the end of each of these sessions. And if people have questions, things that they want cleared up during a talk, then please uh, stand up and shout or use one of the microphones. If there's something you don't understand, don't just sit there thinking, mm, I don't understand this. Just shout, because there'll be other people in the room who also uh, want to know the answer. And the idea of this is to have a tutorial session. Okay? It's not just a series of lectures. Finally, I must ask you to please put your phones on silent, and that includes everyone up here. Okay, thank you very much, and over to Gabor.